nothing lasts forever, and that includes dynasties. Hello everybody, my name is Anthony, and today I'll be talking about the collapse of the Chinese Ming Dynasty. The Ming were a dynasty in China that took over after the collapse of the Yuan Dynasty in 1368. They would rule until 1644, when a variety of causes led to their collapse and replacement by the Qing Dynasty. The causes of collapse, despite being interlinked, can be divided into two main areas, natural causes, such as floods, locust swarming, and droughts, and human causes, such as wars and rebellions. These went on for years, continually damaging the dynasty until a cumulative series of events in 1644 brought about their collapse. Let's start off with the natural causes of the collapse. The 17th century was part of what is now known as the Little Ice Age, a period of global cooling in which temperatures across the planet dropped. China in the early 17th century had entered a period of cold, with temperatures dropping as much as half a degree Celsius, or around 32.9 degrees Fahrenheit for my non-metric using friends. The drop in temperature greatly shortened the crop growing season, and reduced the amount of land available for growing crops. This led to famines. The government did little to relieve the population due to lack of resources, leading to rising discontent. The changing climate also led to devastating droughts. Precipitation in the first half of the 17th century in China varied greatly, and as a result, severe droughts were common and sometimes lasted for years, crippling local agriculture. But don't worry, there wasn't always a lack of water. Floods began to become even more prevalent as the century went on, mainly along the Yellow River. Floods and heavy rain could last from only half a month to several months, negatively affecting local agriculture and infrastructure. Government inability to maintain anti-flood construction, and in some cases to defend said construction, served only to exacerbate damage caused. And if that wasn't enough for China to bear, after months-long droughts, locusts would emerge and ravage whatever was left of the crops. The locusts wouldn't even stay within one region. They could commonly be seen moving around from area to area. The overall distribution of these disasters would change, moving into the 1600s, with droughts and floods being more prevalent in northern China in the latter half of the 16th century and more common among the eastern monsoon region in the first half of the 17th century. To add to the natural disasters, in 1633 an outbreak of the bubonic plague in Shanxi would lead to a catastrophic pandemic which killed hundreds of thousands of people. Now that the natural causes of the Ming's collapse are out of the way, we can move on to the human causes. Money gets things done, and the opposite is true too. A lack of silver, the kingdom's main form of exchange, began to turn into an economic crisis around the 1620s, with Spain cracking down on silver smuggling into China and Japan enacting isolationist policies, destroying the import of silver into the country. The lack of currency made paying taxes extremely difficult for the peasant, who would end up doing local business with copper and paying taxes with silver. Taxes themselves had been increased in order to pay the allowances of the ever-increasing number of nobles. Such taxes, and the government's own lackluster response to natural disasters, disillusioned the peasantry with the emperor. In the 1630s, peasants grew tired of the ruling dynasty. They revolted and turned into large rebel armies. These revolts served to be the final nail in the coffin for the Ming, as control was arrested from them and new emperors were proclaimed across the country. On April 24, 1644, a revolt from the Shanxi region led by Li Tzu Chong captured Beijing, establishing the short-lived Shun dynasty. A summons was sent out on April 5 for any military commander available to come and save the city, but it was no use. The final emperor of the Ming dynasty, Emperor Chongzhen, hanged himself from a tree behind the forbidden city, the emperor's palace, as rebel forces entered the city. In the ensuing chaos, Wu Sangui, a competent general of the Ming dynasty, marched south from the Great Wall, and after retreating to Shanghai, defeated two of Li's armies. Li sent a force of 60,000 soldiers to fight Wu, who appealed to the strongest local force in the region to help, the Manchu prince Dorgon. Wu agreed to serve under him. Their joint forces defeated Li, who would be killed next year. Two days later, on the 6th of June, Wu and Dorgon entered Beijing, and proclaimed him the Emperor of China, establishing the Qing Dynasty. While some Ming loyalists continued to resist the new dynasty in the south, in the coming decades the Qing would consolidate their power and wipe out the resistance. 
The bell had tolled for the Ming, and they would never return to power again. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed my expert narration, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Until next time, and out.